Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Vino Optics Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about cyber medicine. Since the COVID pandemic and the resulting hysteria has occurred, a lot of us have had only meetings with one's doctor online, on a Zoom meeting rather than in person. Now there are some cases where that's probably just fine, but most people don't realize how the most important machine in any medical facility is the eyes and the ears and the nose and the senses of the medical personnel that have undergone you know, hundreds of millions of years of evolution and are exquisitely sensitive to, uh, to the kinds of things that uh, can go wrong on a body. And one of those things that's missing, and, and all of them are really missing, but one of the biggest things that's missing is one's ability to see blood under the skin in the color states. Even back at the time of the Greeks, color pallor of the skin was one of the symptoms that was often part of, a, of the diagnosis. And even today, up to 30% of uh, symptoms mention the pallor of the skin, especially within cardiovascular sorts of diseases. What you're missing when you look through a Zoom camera or through any, it is, it, on a cyber meeting is that you're now seeing the patient through a camera. And the camera doesn't have the same kinds of eyes as do we. When you see a person in real life, which is, of course, this is still not real life, now it's just one camera rather than two, but we gain nothing by going from two cameras to just one because this one camera is losing all of the information that you get in real life from bare skin. In fact, one of the things that I've researched on in a publication back in 2006 is why we have red-green vision at all. Some of us primates have red-green vision, and it's a peculiar kind of vision in that it's not equispaced across the spectrum. It's, in fact, the new kind of uh, uh, cone sensitivity, spectral sensitivity that we have above dogs and other kinds of animals is right next to one of the old ones. So we have kind of a very low wavelength sensitive one down in the blues, and we had an old one that was sort of in the mid 500s, if you're a dog or a bunny rabbit or all the rest of the mammals. This new one, though, is right next to that one. And it seems like a terrible idea. The camera cones in your camera are equispaced across the spectrum. For birds, they have four cones, not three, and they're equispaced. It seems like a terrible idea to have one here and two here, but it's exactly what you need if you want to be sensitive to the oxygenation modulations of blood under the skin. Why would you want to see oxygenation modulations of hemoglobin under the skin? That's what allows you to see the blushes and blanches and all of the color states on skin. The pallor changes that we see in regular life for seeing emotions and health and things like this, um, you have to have that kind of red-green vision, that peculiar kind of red-green vision in order to see it. And it's exactly that same sense that doctors and medical personnel implicitly use. They often don't realize they're using it in order to see when the patient is, is about to faint or where the infection is in the eye. And it's long been known for a couple hundred years since Dalton that those of us who are colorblind are extremely handicapped. They're health blind. They're unable to see these states of health that everybody takes for granted and don't even realize that they can see. When you see a patient through a camera, you lose that ability that you don't even realize that you have. People need to get back to seeing other people in person, especially medical personnel, so that they can see these color states that allow them to better identify symptoms, as well as all of the other kinds of subtle things that you can only get by measuring a real patient with your real hands and real eyes and so forth. And that was your Vino Optics Science Moment.